Hello everyone, welcome to Professor 3 Mac and also welcome to the second part of the video where I am trying to show you how to model elastic plastic deformation in porous materials or metals which are under compression. So these pores or defects could be due to manufacturing process such as uh, additive manufacturing or casting etc. So this part is more practical part where I will show you how you will construct the model and run the simulation and get the results which are shown here on the screen. So we will construct a cylinder which will have these dimensions, 2 mm diameter and length of 3 mm. We will apply a compressive load where we will fix the bottom surface in all directions while we will apply a vertical displacement of 1 mm from the top. And then we will try to monitor like relative density, void volume fraction etc under compression. In this part of the video. Later on I will also show you how to include the damage in these materials and again the damage could be uh, due to the voids, their growth and coalescence or it could be due to, or due to the deviatoric part of plasticity. So again that will be the next part. In this part we will mostly focus on elastic plastic deformation of porous metal. So let's go to Abacus and see how we can do it. Okay, so let's first start using Abacus CAE. We go to the part module and I will now construct a 3D geometry. As I told you, two millimeter diameter and length of three millimeter. Let me call it cylinder. 3D deformable solid extrusion. So let me select a circle and I will give a dimension of from zero zero to one zero. This means it will be have a diameter of two millimeter. Now if I press K, I can give the depth and in this case I will give a depth of 3 millimeters. So I am defining millimeters myself, you can make in millimeters as well, but then you will have to change the consistent units in material properties, etc. So now we go to material module, create material, we can name the material to anything, let's call it mm, porous metal. We need to define the elastic properties and plastic properties. Density we don't need in this case. So let's go with the elastic properties first. So we need to define the Young's modulus. We're going to use isotropic linear elasticity as I showed in my previous recording or video. So have a look at that for those properties. I'm using steel properties in this case. Now for the plastic part, we will have to define the deviatoric plasticity and also the porous plasticity. So we will start with deviatoric and then we will define the porous metal plasticity using the same menu here. <clears throat> so let's start with the plasticity first and I, you can use different models, Johnson & Cook model, other kinematic models. Again, if you are interested in Johnson & Cook model, you can look at uh, the video which is shown on the top. Here I'm going to use these parameters, which again I have already shown in my previous recording. Again, these should come from the experiments. Then the porous metal plasticity part, again I have discussed the brief theory behind this porous plasticity. So we need to assign the relative density or the opposite of the void volume fraction. In this case, we are assuming it to be 0.85. And then we have to define these parameters Q1, Q2 and Q3. If they are selected to be one zero then it can all everything converges to Goulson's model we can also define the failure criteria due to void growth and coalescence in that case we need to give the total void volume fraction and the critical void volume fraction where the failure will start generally the people use 0.3 for metals but again it depends on the material type so it comes from experiment in this case it's irrelevant right now because we are mainly interested in elastic plastic deformation so I will cancel it for the time being so now we have defined the elastic and plastic ingredients of the deformation. Also, we can define the word nucleation, but again, in this case, we, we are not interested in that because we are more, it's a compressive load, so mostly voids will contract in these cases. Okay, so now press, okay, we have all three ingredients. So let me think, yeah, okay, that should be fine now. And we now create a solid section using the same material properties. And we will select porous metal which we just created and then we will assign section pressing this button. And when we select this, then it should turn to green. When we assign this section to the part and you see now everything is defined correctly. Now we go to assembly module as usual and instance the part here. We only have one part so we don't need to worry about assembly here. We just bring it here. 
And now we go to the next module, which is a step module. Since it's a static compression analysis, so I'm going to use a static general step. So create step, select static general, continue. Again, if you're interested in this kind of analysis, look at my other videos. So I'm turning on the NL zoom and I'm giving the increment to a very large size. And again, just giving increment size of 0.1 as initial and also maximum so that I get a certain number of outputs. Okay. For, for the field output variables, which we need in this case, we also need the void volume fraction and also relative density. So I'm gonna go into the field outputs and I will select those. If I have failure criteria, then I can also select those. But in this case, we are interested in relative density and also void volume fraction. And we're gonna track it throughout the deformation. Okay. We don't need any interaction as you know because there is only one part and now loading as we will fix this bottom surface in all three directions so i'm gonna select the displacement boundary condition and then select the surface press ok and then i can select u1 u2 and u3 which are ux ui and uz to be zero and that's it this surface is fixed again your boundary condition could will depend on your test which you are trying to simulate now we'll apply a vertical displacement and in u3 direction so u3 should be let's give it a value of one millimeter which we i already given gave in my slides so this is how it looks like i haven't defined anything on the top in x and y direction and you will see later on that we will have some problems in the lateral deformation also you can specify pressure if it's a force control test so it depends on you what you really want to do now we go to the mesh and then we select the part first and then we individually match each part so in this case we only have one part i'm just going to go with a default seed and also default meshing criteria then i will just mesh it because we are not really trying to do any mesh sensitivity analysis here there are some nice videos on different element types in the same in my channel as well so please have a look at those also these are the default criteria we are using in the in case when you have dim damage you might have to select element deletion to be yes to see how the damage really progresses. Now I go to the job module and I will create a job. I will call it, for example, porous metal. Since compression, so we call it compression continue. And now if I go to the job manager, I just can submit the job. And then I can also press monitor to look at what's happening in the job, if there are any warnings or any errors. So you see there are some warnings. Let's see what these are. So you can see most of them are due to the fact that we are asking for certain outputs which are not relevant for this element which we have used. Also, there is excessive distortion. So this means we need to go back and refine the mesh, but I'm not going to do it for the time being because I'm just trying to show you the whole methodology rather than optimizing the mesh. Again, there are videos on that. So see, I only applied a vertical displacement and it didn't constrain the top surface in the vertical, in the X and Y direction. So we can see some literal motion going on or deformation going on. So we need to uh, go back there. Also, we, in the same model, we can see relative density that how it evolves. So you see it started from 0.85, which is this initial value. And then as the deformation progressed, the density material was becoming more dense because your voids were crooked basically contracting and we reach up to 0.996 so now we go back and also you can look at the void volume fraction as well plastic strain etc due to the deviatoric part so this is how you do it now we need to do a realistic simulation where we will try to constrain the top surface so i will go back and i will apply edit the boundary condition where i applied the vertical displacement and i will constrain the top surface in vertical in horizontal directions x and y so it doesn't have any literal motion. And we can see a nice compression as you see in the real life test. So now I submit the job again because it was already there. So it was giving me a warning. And now if I run it again, I will get similar warnings. I, will, I might also get the warnings related to the meshing and related issues, which is already there. So you still have to work on the mesh and refine it as well. So 
But anyways, we the simulation finished without any problem. So we now look at the deformation and now you can see it's pretty constrained and it shows full compression rather than having any literal motion. And now we can also track again the relative density. Also mesh is not optimized as I said, so you need to really work on the mesh. And you can see, you can generate nice animation where you can plot the evolution of relative density or wide volume fraction throughout the deformation. So this is what you can do. You can also do deviatoric plastic strains or equivalent plastic strains as well, how they really evolve. So I hope this all made sense and it's clear. In the next video, I will show you how to include different competing damage criteria to form to really simulate damage.